you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew. I'm going to jump right into the Word this morning. Matthew chapter number 25. If you will turn there with me. How many is ready for the Word this morning? Oh, Lord, help me. How many is ready for the Word this morning? Amen. Matthew 25. I'm going to read... A little bit of scripture this morning, beginning in verse number 14, and we're going to continue our series of living godly in an ungodly world, and uh, we'll, we'll finish that up next week, Lord willing, but this morning I'm going to do my best to deposit into you what the Lord has laid on our heart for this morning. Matthew chapter 25, beginning in verse number 14 down through verse number 30. A little longer reading than normal this morning, but I believe it's important to lay a foundation for where we're going together this morning. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his ability." And straightway or immediately he took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them another five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gathered two or gained two. And then he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought the other five with him, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five, but behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received the two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. And lo, there that has that is with you now. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gathereth where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own usury or interest upon that which I had given him. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him that hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have an abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness." There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Our subject this morning is found in Matthew 25, 14 through 30. And for a few moments today, I want to talk to you about the unprofitable servant, the danger of buried talents. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. I thank you for your word. I thank you for its anointing. I thank you for the privilege, the opportunity to stand in your in your sanctuary one more time. Now, Lord, I pray. I pray for there to just be the sweetness of your spirit enter this room. I pray that the Holy Spirit would anoint this vessel of clay. I pray that I would decrease and you would increase. Let me preach this word today with the power and the anointing and the love of Christ and of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for honoring the word of the Lord this morning. As we continue our series today, allow me to take just a moment to recap a couple of things that we have shared over the last few weeks. We know today that you and I, as men and women of God, have been called not to be owners, but we are 
stewards. And if we ever needed godly men and women, we need them now. And in order for us to be godly, we have to be found in right standing with the Lord. I think that's pretty basic. We understand that. But we know this, that in order for us to be in right standing, we have to realize the role in which we are called to. We are not called to be owners, but we are called to be stewards. And we know this, that with stewards, it is required that we be found faithful. Now, in order for us to really grab a hold of this, we have to understand that the things that we have been given, and we've talked about them throughout the last couple of weeks, is we have been given life. We have been given time. We have been given talents. We've been given possessions. We've been given finances. And all of these things are owner and steward relationships that we have with our Heavenly Father. And we understand that we must steward every aspect of our life in a manner that brings glory and honor to the Lord. It should never bring about attention to ourselves or us get into a place where we began to build our own kingdom. This morning, as we began to look after last week, we talked about life, knowing it is that which we have received, but we know that with life, we also have this thing called time, meaning there's a, a limited time that we have in this life, meaning it is but a vapor. It's a short while. We don't get to stay here forever, but we will give an account of our stewardship with the life and the time that God has given us. And how many knows that we don't have to go backwards to go forward, but we can learn from history. And when we look at history, we find that there is godly men and godly women that mark history that lived in an extraordinary manner where when they walked in the room, so to speak, things changed. And in order for us to realize our importance of the kingdom of God and our place in it, we must stop and pause and look at what has effectively changed the landscape of our nation as well as the nations of the world throughout history. And we could start talking about men and women that have came before us, men like Smith Wigglesworth or Lester Summerall, or we could go down the list of whoever your favorite evangelist was or pastor, and we could, we could talk about the impacts and the lives that they have touched and changed and how the kingdom has advanced. We could talk about men such as Reinhard Bunke, and they lived godly lives, and they brought thousands upon thousands into the kingdom. And can I tell you, and this is not speaking ill of anyone that came before, but can I say this? Some of the most effective ministries that has chartered the landscape of our history was not done by the most talented individuals but it was done by individuals that was willing and obedient to operate in their gift in which God had called them to be. Now, I, I think we all have preferences, and I'm not talking about preferences, but I, I want you to understand with me this morning that there is distinctive gifts and callings given to men and women. And when you begin to find your place and flow in that and operate, that is your most fruitful place. We got so many people trying to be like brother so-and-so or sister wonderful, and they don't know who they are themselves. Listen, God didn't call you to be a copycat. He called you to be an original. And that's why he gifted you and he gave you talents in order for you to fulfill the purpose that he has for you in this life. I, I heard something last night, and it was a man that was t retelling a story, and it just happened recently, and it really, and I shared it with Brother Jade and Brother Austin, and, and it really hit me, uh, and, and I, I want to share it with you very quickly. This is a, a, a well-known minister. He was traveling. He had three of his staff with him, uh, three young men. One was in his 30s. The other two was in their 20s, and they had a delay in Denver, and they sat down, and they had to, some time, so they sat down at a restaurant. And he said, I'm going to figure something out real quick. And this guy's really connected. Not going to call his name, uh, but he's known, very well known all over the world. But he's got these three men in front of him. And he said, here's the deal. I'm going to give you a scenario real quick. He said, your wife just got a diagnosis. She's dying. 
She's dead, they, the doctors can't do anything for her. Can't do anything for her at all. Now, I want you to name a man or a church, a man that's 45 and younger, that you're going to take her to because the only thing you have is to get a hold of God. You need a miracle. God has to do it. Where are you taking your wife? It was crickets is what he said. And those young men are well-connected men. And he simply said this, we can't think of anyone. That doesn't mean that there's not anyone, but it means this, that we have gotten so used to productions. We've gotten so used to just doing our thing that we no longer have a value or an understanding of the worth of men and women that operate in giftings that God has given them. Can I tell you, I can, I I wasn't around then, but I know this because I've been around my family and the story goes such as this and the elder ones can correct me if they will, but Phil, the oldest of our siblings, uh, he was diagnosed with polo. They've taken him home, said, there's nothing we can do for you. Just take him home. Home. And but mom and dad on the way home, they decided they would stop at Brother Dalton's house and they put Phil on Brother Dalton's lap and they prayed and he was miraculously healed. Why? Not because Brother Dalton was the most talented or the most gifted, but he was a man that operated in his gift and in his talent. And therefore, he was not one that was going to be intimidated by others because he didn't fit into their mold, so to speak. And you say, What are you saying this? morning. What I'm saying today is this. uh, We are in a season right now in America especially that where we have been led to believe that if you don't stand behind this place right here or if you don't stand in a choir loft and sing a song, then you have nothing to contribute. Uh, But can I tell you, that is not true at all. We need men and women of God to understand uh, that if we are going to be godly people, if we are going to change change the course in which we are currently on. We need men and women to operate in their gift and in their talent. And here's one of the things that I hear continually throughout ministry is this. Uh, well, I just don't know. And there is this spirit of intimidation. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, there is a danger when men and women of the faith bury their Talent, uh, And I want to talk about that for a few moments this morning. We know this, that talent uh, is that which you have been given. It's a pretty basic definition, but there's a few other things we can talk about when you start using the word talent. It is a special natural ability or aptitude. It is a power of mind or body considered to be given to a person for the use and the improvement and advancing. It is a capacity or achievement of success. Uh, but we also know this for the believer, for the man or the woman of God uh, that has yielded their life to the Lord, we know this, upon our new birth in Christ, uh, upon the arrival of the Holy Spirit taking up residence in our life, uh, we have been given talents uh, in the spiritual realm uh, that we also must steward. Uh, And can I tell you, it does not matter uh, that you don't preach like brother so-and-so or that you don't sing like sister so-and-so. It doesn't matter that your style is different than others. Uh, What matters is that you understand uh, that God has gifted you uh, and he has equipped you uh, for a specific purpose within the body of Christ. Uh, We know this in Romans chapter 12 verses 3 through 6. It says, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. uh, For as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. uh, So we been many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another having then gifts differing meaning this I'm glad we're not all the same please hear me but you and I need to understand uh, we must make room uh, for our brothers and sisters to operate in their giftings. Uh, we must once again make room uh, for the Holy Spirit to be present uh, 
not just in our lives, uh, but in the midst of the congregation once again. The, uh, the Gospel John in chapter 3 and 27 says, A man can receive nothing uh, except it be given him from heaven. Uh, you and I have been given things uh, by the Spirit of God and through the shed blood of Calvary, the ultimate sacrifice, uh, the victory that was wrought then. Uh, there's some things that is available and has been deposited into each one of us, uh, and we are responsible for stewarding those things in our life. Uh, can I say to you today, these gifts or talents, uh, they have been given to you and I for a specific purpose. What is that purpose? If you go to the writings of the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, Paul is writing and he begins to lay it out. He says, listen, there's diversity of gifts, uh, but it's the same spirit. Uh, he says there's difference of administrations, uh, but it's the same Lord. He says there's diversities of operations, uh, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But notice this, uh, because uh, it is to profit with all, meaning this, uh, you have a unique gifting uh, and that gifting is to bring about a completion uh, where the body of Christ in general not just yourself begins to profit uh, can I tell you God is always wanting us to increase he's wanting us to mature he's wanting us to grow into greater things uh, but can I tell you while there is a multitude of talents uh, and men have uh, can place greater value on one or two versus the other but let me say this to you this morning uh, none are insignificant in the eyes of God. Uh, listen, uh, you may not value your big toe a lot, but if it's missing, uh, you're going to know it's missing. Uh, can I tell you, it's in a very important part of the body. Uh, can, and le you, Everything has a unique function. Uh, and you and I need to understand uh, that what we have been taught uh, is not necessarily accurate, uh, that you don't really matter that much. But I'm going to tell you something. Everybody in this house, this morning matters uh, and every one of you listen you can make any excuse you want uh, but there is no excuse that's going to stand before the Lord uh, you can say well if they was nicer to me I would have operated in my gifting or I would have done this no 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 listen uh, we will give an account for our stewardship uh, for what we do with our if you're called to preach you should be preaching uh, if you're called to sing you should be singing uh, if you're called to teach you should be teaching you can and this whole thing now that, and I'm sorry, I'm going to get in trouble this morning, uh, but there are so many people that when they get to 63 or 65, they think they get to retire. Don't work that way, Wade. Put your hand down. You don't get to retire. It, that's wishful thinking. In the world, you may retire from some things, but can I tell you, in the body of Christ, uh, you're still as needed in your senior years or you are when you're in your baby years. Can I tell you, there has to be the elder and there has to be the younger. Uh, there has to be wisdom setting with that which has the energy. Uh, can I tell you, uh, Joshua would have never had the victory that he had if there wasn't a Moses on top of the mountain with his hands raised. Uh, can I tell you this morning, uh, you don't grow out of your gift. Uh, you don't grow out of the talents that God's given you. Uh, and we got one group of people saying, well, I'm old now. Just let the new ones do it. I'm going to quit. Uh, well, listen, uh, that's not an option. Uh, but then you got the new ones coming on saying, well, uh, I just don't know if I really want to commit to that much. Uh, so they're going to take that talent and they go bury it in the earth and say, well, I'll deal with it and I'll do something with it when I'm 50. Uh, you don't know if you're going to live to be 50. Uh, you have no promise of of tomorrow. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, does it matter what the age is? Uh, after this life is over, uh, we will stand and give an account before God. Uh, and we will not give an account about how we dressed, uh, but we will give an account uh, for how we steward the life and the time uh, and the talents that God has given us. Uh, and can I tell you today, uh, that young man that, that talked to those other three young ministers uh, or people in his staff, uh, they should have been able to rattle off name after name after name uh, of brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so uh, that walks with the anointing and the power of God, uh, but we have a generation that doesn't know how to do that. Uh, why? Uh, it's not because of the preacher per se by himself. He's guilty, uh, but at the same time, uh, we have men and women uh, that do not 
value their gifts and their talents. Uh, but can I tell you, you are an important part of the body of Christ. Uh, your hand cannot do what your foot does. Uh, listen, uh, your ear can't do what your nose does. The same thing. Uh, if you have the gift of prophesy, you should prophesy. Uh, if you have the working of miracles in your hands, uh, the, anointed by the Holy Spirit, you should be flowing in that. Uh, but the thing is today, because of the buried talents uh, of this hour, uh, we have sick people come uh, and they leave sick. Uh, we have depressed people come uh, and they live depressed. Uh, we have people that are upside down in all kinds of situations uh, and they leave the same way they came. Uh, why? Uh, not because the word wasn't preached, uh, not because the choir didn't sing pretty and anointed, uh, but because men and women choose to live a life with buried talents. Uh, can I tell you, uh, there is things that happen when men and women operate in the giftings and the callings of God uh, that you and I today need to understand. Uh, you can say, well, I love the Lord. I'm glad you can say that. Uh, you can lift your hands when they're worshiping. I'm thankful for that. Uh, you can say, preach on preacher when he's preaching uh, and he says something you like. I appreciate that. Uh, but you can put on the smile. Uh, you can go out to Sunday dinner week in and week out and say, everything's good. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, you are deceiving yourself uh, if you are walking in a place of disobedience when God has called you uh, to operate in a realm of gifts and talents. Uh, and you say, well, uh, I just don't know. Uh, they'll think I'm strange. Uh, they'll think I'm off. Uh, oh, but, but what if I'm wrong? Uh, listen, but, but what if you're not? Uh, if you're not, uh, somebody going to be set free. Uh, somebody going to be delivered. Uh, somebody going to receive a miracle. Uh, listen, uh, we still need somebody uh, to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Uh, we still need a word of knowledge in the sanctuary. Uh, we still need tongues and interpretation. Uh, we still need somebody uh, that's willing to flow in the gift that God has given them. But we have a generation today, young and old alike, and we're currently dealing with a generation of believers that have allowed the enemy to strip them, strip them of the importance and the understanding of their gifts, which has led to the stripping of their passion, the removing of their joy, the removing of their peace, as well as removing their concern for others. There's a host of the body today that has buried their talent in the earth. And the result is, is what we see around us, nations falling into utter darkness. Families are being completely overran by utter darkness. Communities filled with churches on every corner are now communities enslaved to evil. Nations have become dwelling places for seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Spiritual wickedness now is sitting in high places, all because men have chose to bury their talents. Luke chapter 16, verse number 10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in the much. Here's what I've come to the conclusion of this morning. We've desired the much, but we have been unfaithful in the least. In our text, we see two of the three individuals received increase due to the simple fact that they was faithful in stewarding what had been placed in their hand. But then we see the one who chose to bury that which was given to him. And can I tell you, his story is much different. I'm preaching a message this morning and teaching to you this morning something that church growth seminars would tell me I should never speak and say from a platform. But I'm going to be real with you today. Please hear me. 1 Corinthians 4 and 2 says it's still required in stewards that a man be found faithful. We have to be faithful. We have to be faithful in what God has called and given and trusted into our care. I know this to be true this morning. There is gifts and talents in this room and amongst this congregation. And they're lying dormant because of insecurities, because of uncertainties. And you're allowing the enemy 
to have a foothold in your life. Because can I tell you, God never has and he never will honor disobedience. When Saul disobeyed, that's when things began to be rent from him, stripped from him. There is things that have been stripped from the body of Christ today because we continually walk in a state of disobedience because of the simple fact we think it's not that big of a deal. It's a big deal, my friend. You have been gifted. You have been given and entrusted talents and specific things that are to be used to bring the glory and the honor to the Lord and to the kingdom. Please hear me. We see this morning in Scripture in our text where two hear the most beautiful words that man could ever hear. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you rulers over many and now come and enter into the joy of thy Lord. They was able to hear that because of the simple fact they was faithful over what had been placed in their hands. You've heard me say throughout our time together that last words are important. I believe that to be true. I've stood by hospital beds, young and old alike. I've stood and heard them reminisce about certain things, but I've never heard anybody say to me, I wish I would have worked more. I wish I'd pulled one more double shift. I've never heard anybody really say, I, I wish I would have made a little bit more money. No, 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 no. Their perspective changes. Please hear me. Paul, in writing the end of his life, writing to Timothy, a young man who he loved greatly, he begins to write by the unction of the Holy Spirit. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, the first part of that chapter, he simply gives him a charge, one you're probably familiar with. He says, I want you to stay focused. You need to preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. You need to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He said, because there will be a time come when men will not endure sound doctrine. He said, they're going to have itching ears and they're going to leap all kinds of stuff up on them. And, but he says, but you need to be faithful. Do the work of the evangelist. Make foolproof your ministry. He says, but then he starts to write in verse number six, he says, for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. But then notice what he says in verse seven and eight. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. What he was really revealing to Timothy is this. Timothy, even when it was hard, even when it was difficult, even when I was shipwrecked, even when I was beaten, when I was pri in prison, when I was beaten from an inch from my life, he said, I never buried my talent. You may be going through a hard season this morning. You may be going through some difficult things this morning, but you can't bury your talent. You can't stop operating in your gift. You can't put it on the shelf and say, I'll deal with it later. This ideal that we have succumbed to in recent years, that it doesn't really matter if I engage or not, is nothing more than a lie from the pits of hell. No excuse will be good enough this morning when you stand before him. You have been gifted to contribute to the body and your unwillingness to do so is having a negative effect on the body in general. Please hear me this morning. You and I will give an account for how we live our lives. And we will give an account for our behavior concerning our talents and our giftings. I know this is a little slower this morning, but intentionally on my part, because I want you to get this today. I love evangelistic preaching, camp meeting preaching. I, I, I'm, I, I love to do that. But as I shared with you a few weeks ago, I believe we're in a very critical time where we need to slow down 
And we need to have some sound biblical teaching where once again we understand that we just don't fly out by the seat of our pants, but we have to understand we have accountability and we have a responsibility. Can I tell you, the babies that you hear in this house this morning, they don't need us to have a fad or a fashion. They don't need us just to entertain, but they need to have a strong foundation of what it is to be operating in the power and the anointing of God. Uh, Listen, uh, they need to experience uh, a move of God in their presence. Some of you older ones in here, you can recall in your younger days when the brother Daltons of the hour uh, would lay hands on people and they was delivered. Uh, you, you can talk about others where you saw the power of God move in a sanctuary in such a manner where there was a holy hush that settled in and nothing moved uh, and they waited on God. Uh, we tell those stories but this generation has yet to hear it. They have yet to experience. Uh, listen, uh, I can tell you from experience you can go experience anything in the world uh, and you can take pictures of it and you can make slideshows of it uh, but unless you're there and you smell it, unless you touch it, it's not the same. Uh, I'm thankful for all of the technology, but can I tell you, uh, we don't need to just do a nice production, uh, but we once again need men and women of God to operate in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Uh, Listen, uh, we identify as things, but yet we don't possess anything that we identify with. Uh, Can I tell you, most of our denominations uh, in in America, in the Western Hemisphere, sphere especially, uh, that when you look at their status uh, and their statistics within their own uh, uh, internal investigations, if you will, uh, they say that we're spirit-filled. Uh, we're, we're Pentecostal by experience. Uh, we, we believe in the gifts of God uh, and all of these things, but a large majority of the people sitting in them have yet to experience it for themselves. Uh, and therefore, we have people that's professing one thing, uh, but they've not yet grabbed uh, a hold of those gifts and talents that God has given them or if they have they've been so intimidated uh, that they take it and they bury it Uh, but can I tell you uh, it is unprofitable for a man Uh, it is unprofitable for a woman uh, to take what God has given you uh, and to not invest it in the kingdom Uh, the man with the five talents took it and he invested Uh, the man with the two talents took it and invested Uh, but the man with the one took it and buried it and said I'm not going to do anything with it Uh, but the Lord Lord said he was a wicked and slothful man. Uh, listen, uh, how many of us would be deemed profitable this morning uh, or how many of us would be deemed as wicked and slothful uh, because of the simple fact we took what God gave us uh, and we buried it and said, uh, it's not really that significant. Uh, I didn't get five like somebody else did. Uh, I can't sing like she does. Uh, I can't preach like he did. Uh, he didn't call you to be them. Uh, he called you to be who you are. Uh, and he gave you that one talent uh, and he says I need you uh, in the body uh, for such a time as this uh, and if you take that thing and bury it uh, the body suffers uh, you know what somebody might be in this room uh, they don't need to hear the preacher this morning uh, they didn't need to hear the singer this morning uh, maybe they needed the man of God or a woman of God to walk by I'm not talking about garbage uh, I'm not talking about off the wall stuff uh, I'm talking about maybe a man of God or a woman of God that's been laying in the prayer closet at all week uh, that heard God uh, that received a word of knowledge uh, that walked up and said you know what the Lord said this week uh, that he's going to do a thing for you uh, maybe that's what they need this morning in this house uh, but because all of it's buried uh, they're going to walk out the same way they walked in uh, and say well if God was really who he was uh, he would have ministered to me today no it's not God honey uh, it's men and women living in places of disobedience uh, and you got buried talents uh, I've got a simple message this morning. Uh, Go find a spiritual shovel. uh, Go dig up that thing uh, and begin to invest it in the kingdom of God. Uh, It's not too late yet. (laughs) Hear me this morning. No excuse will be good enough when you stand before him. You have been gifted to contribute to the body and your unwillingness to do so does not put you in good standings. Can I tell you, this thing is not based on feelings, but this is based on commission and commandments. We are called to this thing, and we must walk this thing out like the generation before us did. 
As they come to the music this morning, I'm going to wrap it up real quick. This is not to frighten anyone, but this is to be real and transparent and completely honest this morning. We go back to our text in Matthew chapter 25, verse 24 and 25. The man that had received the one talent begins to speak, and this is what he says. I was afraid. I was afraid. And I went and hid that talent in the earth. I hid that talent in the earth. May I say this to you? It is better to fear the Lord than it is to fear man. More than it is to fear man. Your desire, desire to be pleasing to man, be pleasing to man, is very dangerous. The early church, as they was threatened and said, don't ever speak in the name of Jesus again, they said, how in the world can we not speak in his name? They did not let the culture dictate what they was going to do and how they was going to behave. But this unprofitable servant, he said, I was afraid. There is so many people today within the body of Christ that's afraid of rejection, afraid of being misunderstood. And I, I understand that that is even a genuine concern but please here's what I would say with any type of gifting and talent that has been trusted into your care there is a way for you to operate in that place of gifting in a safe manner in a healthy manner and it's simply by becoming willing to come subject to those that God has put in authority over you. You may not get it right every time, but the thing is this, if you keep a pure heart, if you spend time along with the Lord and not allow your things, to, your, you, don't, you don't operate from an emotional standpoint, but you operate from the fear of the Lord and the reverence of God. It's a very serious thing for us to stand and say well the Lord said I don't take that lightly know that the Lord is speaking to you how do I know that as I stand and I spend time with him I stay in his word and I grow and develop in my relationship with him but notice he says I was afraid may I remind you today the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear but of love power and of a sound mind if the Lord begins to deposit things in you, God begins to move you in a certain realm, a certain way. It's like anything else. We grow in it. We develop in it. We mature in it. But don't be the man or the woman that says, you know what, I just, I just don't know. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to bury it. Because if you bury it this morning, that little still small voice that you hear so clearly it'll begin to fade it'll begin to fade and then it won't be long before you begin to miss well why is it the Lord speaking to me or showing me things or ministering to me the way he was it's because that thing that you got buried the Lord says you know I'll, I'll, let, I'll give you a space of time but there comes a time when I'm going to come back and I'm going to require you to begin operating in it and presenting it to me and he's not above taking that and giving it to somebody else I understand that gifts and callings is given without repentance but however I also believe this God will continue his work and he can gift others and he can move up on others and please hear me We're either standing in a godly manner or an ungodly manner this morning in the eyes of the Lord. We're either searching and following after him and running after him or we're not. There's no plateau in this thing. You don't just get to coast your way on into heaven. But we are commissioned to be ambassadors to go and tell. And every one of us has been gifted and called in specific ways to do that. my prayer today is that nobody under the sound of my voice will ever hear these words 
cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The end of this man who was given one talent is so disturbing. He was part of the master circle. He was entrusted by the master. But he failed. Please hear me today. If we are going to live godly in an ungodly world this morning, we must begin to unbury the talents and begin to once again give place to the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in these sanctuaries that we call houses of worship. Because can I tell you, talent, cleverness, entertainment, production is it the answer. If that was the answer, my friend, we would not have the problems that we have with addiction throughout our world today. We would not have the problem with human trafficking that we're having today. But we would be the most righteous nation on the planet or that has ever existed in history right now if that's what it took. But we got all of those things. And I'm not against those things. But I'm against those things when we say we have just those things and we don't need the talent of the Holy Spirit that's been gifted to us. It's not enough just to identify this morning as a believer. But we all must be individuals who are fruitful for the kingdom. He's not asking you to be anybody else. He's just asking you to be you this morning. But there's a lot of noise in our world. I'm going to leave you with this this morning when we're going to pray. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 15. There's a word of warning. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. He says, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns and or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree could not bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. But then verse 21. Here's the reality of our day. I know our newspapers and our social media feeds say something differently. And I don't want to be insensitive or mean-spirited today. It's not my intention at all. But every obituary you read, everybody got their wings and everybody went to heaven today. But my Bible tells me differently in chapter 7 of Matthew 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So here's the will of the Father this morning. What's he gifted you with? What's he placed in your hand? What talent has he given you? Is it to bake for the one that's hurting? Is it to clothe the one that's naked? Is it the one that needs a cup of water? Is it the one that needs a bandage? Is it, what has he gifted you with? You say, well, I went to medical school to be a medical professional. That's wonderful. We need that, but we also need medical professionals that will bind. And as they're putting that bandage on, just pray the prayer of faith, operating in that realm. Can I tell you, there are those that are gifted with athletic ability. We need them in the NFL. We need them in the Major League Baseball parks of, a, of America and other places. Why? You say, why, preacher? Is because there's a whole group of people that can be influenced right there by somebody that says, I'm a follower of Jesus. 
I can't get in that locker room and pray, but that big lineman can. Do you hear me? But what I'm seeing is in the midst of all of this stuff that's going on in our world, and we're starting to see a foothold get into some of these areas, Hollywood and other places, and it starts getting tough, it starts getting tough, and these young men and these young women begin to say, I just don't know if I can do it. It's so hard. And the enemy just keeps getting on their shoulders and saying, you need to quit. You need to quit. You need to quit. You need to just go do the traditional thing. The traditional thing's not bad if that's what God called you to. But not everybody was called to do it grandpa's way. Not everybody's called to do it grandma's way. We did a major disservice in the United States of America, in my generation, and a little bit younger. And I don't see this, say this with any disrespect at all. Generation before me and my generation, if the church in which we grew up in thought you had a little bit of talent, a little bit of charisma, and you as a young man and you went to the altar and prayed, they immediately, everybody wanted to turn you into a preacher. And we destroyed a lot of young men because that's not who they was called to be. That's not what they was gifted and talented to be. And in the midst of doing that, some of them should have been lawyers. Some of them should have been in the athletic department. Some of them should have been in higher education. Some of them should have been in the medical field. And we didn't put them there because everybody had to be a this. Everybody had to be this. We look around today and we left those institutions wide open for nothing but the secular world and the liberal thinkers. And now we wonder why this generation is indoctrinated the way it is. It's because we failed to put men in their place of talent and gifting. There has to be an awakening. We can't be unprofitable. We have to unbury the buried talent as we stand all over the house this morning please hallelujah as we take a few moments this morning and just reverence the sanctuary just for a moment today Maybe you're under the sound of my voice in this room or the other side of that camera today and you'd say, I know God's put some things in my heart. He's equipped me to do some things, but I've not. I've not really developed them, nor have I really yielded and surrendered to that. This is not to single individuals out. This is not a place of weakness, but as we say often, this is a place of strength. God's grace and God's mercy allowed us to be awakened one more time today. And he gave us the strength and the ability to be in this house one more time. And you've heard this preacher one more time. But the question is, what are you going to do with that gift? What are you going to do with that talent? No more excuses. No more hesitation. But are you willing to just go all in and say, God, if you can use anything, use me. It's wonderful and it's needful for us to be here today. We are here to be edified and equipped. But we need to be visible and present out there. That means we need men and women in every sphere operating in their gift and their talent. Do you realize you could be most beneficial walking into the local convenience store than you can even in here? Friday, I was walking out of Shell Gas Station. I walked in to grab something to drink real quick, and I was met by a young man I hadn't seen for some time. He greeted me, and immediately I said, How are you, Jimmy? He said, I'm okay. But then immediately his okay turned to tears coming down his face. And he said, Ron, would you just pray for me? 
He said, I, I just really need you to pray for me. You don't know what somebody's going through. You don't know what their need is. Listen, didn't have time to sing three songs and preach a message, but I had to flow in my gifts. Do you understand what I'm saying today? We have to be the hands and feet of Christ everywhere we go. We need to have an impact beyond the walls. And we do that by operating in our gift. So this morning, if you're under the sound of our voice and you see, you know what, I want, I, want to, I want that gift to be developed. I want it to be molded. I, I want to be what, I never want to hear those words, unprofitable servant. But you'd say, you know what, I'll, I'll be honest before God today. I know, I know there's some things I got to change in my life. Listen, I'm talking about reprioritizing your life. You say, I can't let it be on the back burner anymore. But if this message is ministered to you, I'm going to invite you to come as they sing a chorus. I want to pray with you this morning before we leave today. Listen, this has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you and the Lord this morning. You're not going to hurt my feelings. But I don't ever want you to hear the words, unprofitable servant. So as they begin to minister in song, can we just have an attitude of prayer in this room just for a moment? Oh, God, we love you this morning. Would you come? You'd say, I, I want to be found faithful this morning. Would you come? I'll give you an opportunity. To hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this message, and I hope it blessed you. And please check our description below. You'll find all of our social medias linked below. And as always, please subscribe so we can reach more people. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.